Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dominic, I'm the host of the Android Factory. In today's episode, we're gonna build a custom toolbar implementation in Jetpack Compose. We see here we have a simple toolbar composable that we use. Uh, we can see in the emulator here, we just have a simple looking toolbar. If we go ahead and click into another screen that kind of has you know backwards navigation, we get this little uh, back arrow that we can go ahead and use to navigate. And if we uh, you know navigate forward and whatnot, no matter where we are, we still have that back gesture to kind of provide all of the functionality that we need and that we would expect. And you know, simple call out here. Obviously, there is a toolbar uh, composable, but part of the reason I like Compose so much is that you can just build functionality yourself quite simply. And this isn't an amazing toolbar, but it's just a simple explanation or demonstration of how you can build something custom, you know, to suit your needs. All right, folks, and as we get started here, smash that like button to help me out. Inside of our components directory, our common directory, I went ahead and added in the simple toolbar. I can bounce back over to the running devices here to show what it looks like. And first things first, we see that we have this little back arrow here that uh, you know is pretty common. So really quickly here, we're just gonna go ahead and bounce over to our resource manager. We're gonna go ahead and click that little plus sign and then vector asset. Simply by clicking on this little icon here that says clip art, we can go ahead and open up like, you know, the whole material icon view here. And if we search for something here, we have the arrow back. I normally change it to the rounded uh, variant as well, just to give the rounded edges on the, um, the asset itself, but this is already selected. We're gonna just change this to IC arrow back as just a normal name for this. We're just gonna click next here, finish, and then we have that resource uh, imported in so that we can go ahead and just use that here. But as we see, the um, simple toolbar has a couple of components here to it, right? It optionally has this icon on the left, it has a title, and then it has this little bottom bar here um, just to kind of separate the content from the actual toolbar. And we'll see that it kind of just, you know, doesn't have the little action back there or the back arrow, excuse me, uh, when you're at like the top level, right? So that's why we made this function here that we can pass in or this parameter, excuse me, nullable, uh, because in some cases we're going to want to have a back action. Other cases, we're not going to want to have back action. But very simply here, let's just talk things out. We have a column here, mainly because we are then going to have a row inside of that row. We will have this icon and then we will have the text. And then beneath the row here, um, we're then going to just have some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of box or some kind of spacer or whatever the case is to actually go ahead and modify this one little line that's down here. So this is the general structure of our simple toolbar that's going to exist here. So we can kind of go ahead and round some things out a little bit. Because we could start with this box here because it's going to be hopefully the simplest. We're going to just have a background color set to the, uh, what we have as the rict Rick text primary, which is just a white color. We're going to tell it to fill max width, of course, and then we are going to have it, uh, let's just say the height of it is just going to be 1 dp for now. Obviously, import that so everything works, and that should just be our little bottom bar there. Let's see here, the text here at this point is just going to be the title. We're obviously going to make it look a little nicer as we um, test it out and whatnot. And then this icon here, optionally add this in. So we're basically just going to say if our on back action does not equal null, then we can go ahead and uh, add in this icon. We're gonna have a painter resource here of that drawable, uh, as soon as we can import the R, of that IC arrow back that we imported earlier. Content description here will just be the back arrow. And that's not too bad for the time being. However, one thing I like to do with these different icons is I like to actually wrap them inside of boxes just because it makes our life a little bit easier, especially if we wanna have a particular click action on it, because then we can go ahead and apply the um, clickable action to the, uh, to, to the box instead of the actual icon. We can then also do things like apply a padding of let's just say 4DP, and then if we also wanted to have a, um, a background of the rounded corner shape. And let's just set a color of transparent there, see how that ends up looking. Okay, I think this is kind of like semi-usable at the moment. We're obviously gonna tweak some things once we see it run for the first time, but this should be roughly good enough. So let's go ahead and make our way over to, uh, let's say the home screen here, which is the screen that we see at the moment. Uh, so we're gonna have to go down to where we're actually drawing the screen and we have the grid display mode here, and we have a lazy vertical grid. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually wrap this whole thing in a column instead, so that we can go ahead and import our simple toolbar. 
the title is going to read as we see on screen, which is going to be all characters. Maybe we'll make this C lowercase um, to avoid the title case kind of thing. And then we just go ahead and paste in our lazy vertical grid underneath it. And if we go ahead and rerun this here, we should see something uh, that kind of resembles what we see on screen. Coming back to life here, the, yeah, so somewhat resembles is like a little bit of a stretch, but <laughs> we do start to see that it does actually look a little bit like uh, what we had seen if you kind of squint and, uh, you know, pretend that it doesn't look that bad. But we're going to go ahead and change a couple things here. So for instance, let's change our font size to something like a, a 30 SP. Let's change our, and it wasn't a uh, font style. Instead, it was just style here. And we want to change around the text style. So we're going to apply a color to it. We're going to apply the font weight bold to it. We have a nice size now. So that should look a little bit better. And then we obviously need to go ahead and use it in the secondary screens that kind of have that back navigation so that we can see that back icon. So we'll go ahead here to the character detail screen, which is what we see on screen again. And let's see here, we do have a lazy column here. And then in our success state here, we do have uh, everything that we want to draw in at this point. Now let me think, do we want to put it inside of here? Because this is then going to be an item in the lazy column, which would then allow it to scroll. So I don't think we kind of want that. And instead, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this out, wrap it inside of a column to do the exact same thing. We will say character details for that. And then we will have our on back action just be an empty lambda for now. And then we're just going to paste everything back in so that our simple toolbar does not scroll with the rest of our content. But now we have an on back action that we need to actually handle. And the way that we navigate around inside of the uh, Jetpack Compose navigation is we need to get all the way back out to the main activity because that is where our nav controller exists. So what we're going to have to do is kind of like bubble up this back action. We will go ahead and just declare something here like an on back clicked quite simply, quite simply like that. The on back action is then just going to be the on back clicked. And then our character detail screen where it's created inside of our main activity is then obviously going to be a little bit broken. We are going to have to go ahead and uh, update some of this stuff here. And then we're going to have the on back clicked. And then it's going to simply just say nav controller dot navigate up. And it'll look something like that. All right, let's go ahead and rerun things here. See how it looks. Coming back to life here, we have all characters. We could leverage a little bit of padding, I'm sure. But if we go ahead here to the Morty uh, Smith character details, we'll see that we start to get this little, uh, you know, back arrow. It does function. It doesn't look the best. So let's go ahead and clean that up. So let's see. First things first, we need to do a little bit of padding magic. And it also doesn't look like our content is aligned there, particularly specifically on the vertical alignment. We're going to set that to center vertically on our row. We're then also going to apply a modifier here, which will then say modifier padding. Um, let's just try 16 DP. Our icon here obviously needs a little bit of a tint here. So we're going to uh, set that equal to our Rick text primary. So it starts to look like the rest of our uh, elements there. Rerunning things a little bit starts to look a little bit better kind of a little big there in my opinion This looks a little small, but we're starting to get there All right folks took me a little bit longer than I thought fighting with some modifier ordering and such but um Let's just cover it again. High level here. We went ahead and just changed some padding on the actual row. So we only have 12 in the vertical direction. Horizontal has 16. Looks a little bit more natural in that sense here. Um, nothing too new on the box here, the icon. We applied some alignment, some padding, some sizing. So we can go ahead and see that there's a little bit of that ripple animation, um, you know, that is uh, of appropriate size and whatnot, which is great. Added in the spacer down here as well, which is a modifier. Uh, of just 12 DP for width to kind of push some separation between these elements here. And the thing to note on this one is that this spacer as well is inside of this if block here for uh, if we have the back action being non-null. So that spacer is not present when we do not have the back button at all. So we get that left justified um, text on, on these higher level you know, fragments or screens, whatever the case is. And then these ones here have a little bit of separation. Could clean it up if it looks a little bit too much. 12, 8, whatever the case is. 
And that's really it. Everything else is basically exactly the same. Didn't really touch anything here. So if we go ahead and view all episodes, we'll see here that this does not have that toolbar. So we're going to just simply bounce over to our character episode screen real quick. And we're going to go ahead and update this as well. Again, we see we have a lazy column. So we're just going to go ahead and cut that out. We're going to put a column in there with the simple toolbar, the title that just says episodes. We'll have our on back action again be on back clicked, which we will obviously need to pass into this function. And then we just paste everything in. I'm going to go ahead and just update this as well. So we're going to just put this here. And so this main screen composable that kind of runs our screen needs it, that needs it, uh, or it gets called out here. And then we're just going to have to go ahead and update the actual composable, the character episode screen to actually accept that as well. That of course is being instantiated inside of our uh, main activity and then we will just have the on back clicked here be equal to our nav controller navigate up and everything should just fall into place if you made it this far in the video smash that like button subscribe if you're brand new it helps me out helps the channel grow we see here we're on the detail screen we go to the all episodes and now we can go ahead and see um, you know that we have this uh, header there it does stay which is pretty nice and then, of course, if we want to go back, we can just go ahead and simply hit the back button and everything works. I know this is a simple example. I know that the actual toolbar composable probably has a lot more functionality and is most likely the best way to go in in most cases here. But um, this is, of course, a simple toolbar. It is our own implementation. If we wanted to get fancier with our own toolbar, we can go ahead and do that inside of here. And we don't need to rely on the actual framework, the actual, you know, um, composable that, that that Google submits to us, we can go ahead and build our own because at the end of the day, it's not really all that difficult. It's just a matter of what do you need to do for your use case. Hopefully you learned something here. Hopefully you got a little bit more confidence building these base building blocks on your own because Compose is just that much fun. But thanks for sticking around. I'll catch you guys in the next one.